which we've been discussing, compared to the inferior and now null and void property claims of the Roman system. Now that document's not going to be Quo Vadis. It's only going to be probably about eight pages when it's finished. But out of it, the next most urgent document uh, is a summary that is suitable for uh, senior treasury and uh, bank officials that gives them a, um, a snapshot on how to engage with this system. Now that really is giving the stone to give them access as to how to go and see the instruments, how to pull them up, how to register, um, and with that you're going to have four documents. The introduction document, which you already have, the document introduction on products, which you already have, the comparison of property rights of the two systems, which is coming, and then this fourth document, which is designed for people like Regan and others that are negotiating and discussing with different treasury uh, slash uh, banking slash people um, that have some influence or some knowledge of the current system. So can I just give, can I ask for some feedback on those outstanding two documents that I've said are coming? Comparing property rights, the essence of currency, and the instruction on how a treasury or bank or anyone like that, a large corporation would be able to engage with this system. Can I just get some comments on that before we continue? Uh, John or Destry or anyone on the call? Richard. What, what do you need, Destry? What's the next things that you see? And John, what are the things that you see are most urgent um, in communicating with people about this system? Um, well, I, right now, I think going back to the uh, IDs and uh, uh, live birth records and all that and getting our trust IDs is, to me, is very critical. Um, I am at a loss right now to say what I think about how to contact and, and reach more people with this. Um, uh, the, the level at which this is all being done is somewhat beyond anyone on the entry level. So we've got to develop some way to uh, ease people into this manner of thought. And uh, that, that's going to be a, that's going to take some real no effort, I believe, Frank. Well, it, it is a it is a, a, a communication campaign. It is a it is a an education campaign. The documents that we've been discussing, once the typos are corrected, there's no reason they can't be available to be downloaded through the the, the bank websites anyway. Would you agree? Sure. Um, so that's one way that it will be available if they go and have a look at the bank websites. But I, I, I am I'm particularly keen that there is some available documents that are there for the kind of meetings and discussions because <clears throat> these discussions are going to come more and more. I, I mean, I don't need to tell you how many countries are literally at the wit's end in what they can and cannot do anymore. I mean, it's it, it, it's been... It's been mission critical now or, you know, DEFCON 1 now for, for months and uh, it's not going to get any better. And it's quantitative easing. It, it, it has got a sting in the tail, as I'm sure you're aware. <coughs> yeah? Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I, I am keen that, that um, the sooner those documents are prepared, the better but I also don't want to be producing things because time is limited, as you know, and my resources are limited. Um, what I'm trying to do is um, unhinge the knowledge and the ability to use the knowledge from being something that is so centrally controlled that it's actually constraining. That's why I've given you the artwork because I don't want to constrain what people need help on right now. Any other comment on the 
discussions on just the financial documents that are coming up? Any any thoughts? Okay, well that that's going to keep going. Um, it's going to keep you know, going to keep obviously refining. The other thing that we're doing is uh, the ledgers that produce the documents that are available to be viewed are being refined at the moment, um, so that when you go and actually look at a Supreme Credit or a Global Union Credit, <coughs> the format of them is going to be slightly refined and improved, uh, and then reloaded, and that's going to happen probably about about a week and a half, two weeks. Um, I, I, I said to you last time too, just in terms of time frames, what are we saying? What we're saying is, in terms of time frames, the entire system in being able to function as as accounting, as transactions, as ledgers, as conversions, needs to be ready no later than the beginning of January. <clears throat> so between then and now, I do need desperately that your your hard nosed feedback on the um, on any perceived holes, concerns, um, as as I send you these documents and as you read, um, very very important. Well, that really leaves um, everything in terms of um, reporting back to you guys and giving you feedback as to what is happening. I, I really now really want to open up to questions that some of you may have. Um, more than happy to, sh to continue to hear from Lee and Walter about the fa fantastic news today, but I'm really open to questions, suggestions, comments from, from you guys. So that's a, my report so far. So I, over to you guys. Hey, Walter. Do you want to crank on? No, if you want to call on Dalton. Dalton, you want to come and uh, say something to Frank? Uh, Frank? Hi, welcome. This is Gary Lee. Oh, hello, Gary Lee. And uh, I would like to introduce you to Dalton Brown, who is sitting here beside us today. Hello. And uh, this is Frank Collins in Australia. So. Hello, Hi. Frank. How are you? I'm good. What about yourself? I'm, I'm going well. We've been having lots of thunderstorms in Sydney, and I think another one's brewing tonight. <laughs> but he just wanted to kind of uh, say thank you for the input that we've had and for the opportunity to work with Reagan and uh, this process and to... Uh, I'll let him tell you. I mean, he's the one that spent the time in jail, but you know that we did a lot of work for him. And, uh, so, Dalton, I uh, kind of expressed Frank a little bit about your uh, hanging in there. It was an experience, a life-changing one. Um, uh, I believe that God put me in there for a reason, and that reason was to awaken my Holy Spirit and to find God. And there were some other reasons, too. Um just the, the whole thing, spending 15 days in isolation, I didn't think I was going to be able to do it in the beginning. But after I prayed to God, I got the confidence to do it. And uh, it, it's overwhelming. It truly is. All, all the stuff that I, I had gone through, all the faces that I saw that in the general... The faces that I saw were depressing, but while I was in there, there was a few that I, I preached the gospel to, from what I have knowledge from the New Testament. From I didn't know much at the time, but I, I preached to what I knew. And uh, I got a few people to actually get a Bible and read it. And while I was in there, Very good. Uh, that was... Uh, that was uh, a real big accomplishment for me. Uh, I felt great after that. Um, it, it's just, uh, it's overwhelming. Uh, it's hard to explain in words. Uh, I feel great though. Uh, well, there's there's three things that, that that people need at the moment, <clears throat> and believe it, not one of them is money. People need their faith fulfilled and not attacked. 
people need heroes and people need miracles now I'm not in the department of miracles and none of us are um, as far as faith yes we, 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 we can play an important part in that and I'll, I'll share something with you in a moment about faith and strengthening faith but what we can all do <clears throat> and what we're all being called to do um, I, I believe more than anything else is, is to live the knowledge and show the knowledge in how we live and in that we are whether we admit to it or not or it's not for us to, to, to dwell on it every day <clears throat> but to, to, to live it in which case we are the heroes that people will look towards and say look in spite of everything they've done in spite of all the evil that they've unleashed there are good people they're not bashing our ears they're not preaching from a pulpit and driving a fancy European car they're living it they are it and because they exist we have hope we have faith so I, I, I'm, I'm very very happy to hear how you um, survived this and the good news of your freedom and you finding strength through what has happened to you um, and know that you're not alone so good on you and, and great to hear thank you well it's been a very exciting time there's been a lot of prayer and a lot of fasting and I guarantee you Frank we have all grown but I think the most exciting thing that we have is your input the words of truth ring to our spirits and to our souls to know that there is hope. You know, Jesus said that we had to have hope. And I, I really uh, I thank you to opening the light because we absolutely did not have the ability to see beyond the darkness. And this has lit the way. The path is becoming clear. And I believe that we have every opportunity to succeed. You do. You do. And you are. I want to share with you something now because it is important. <clears throat> Learning discernment and as faith grows, um, we, we change in our perspective in viewing things literally as children, uh, growing from maybe rebellious teenagers to the wisdom and the gifts that we're given. And I, and I mean this, and I'll, I'll explain this now in a, in a in a in an understanding, which is which is a lesson of of our faith being strengthened, and it is the understanding of the miracle. I see that there are three things we need, and what people need, and they're not money. Um, they need their faith fulfilled. They need heroes, and they need miracles. So let me share with you a miracle. One of the signs we've been promised from the very beginning is that the end of days of evil we shall see the dead rise. The dead shall rise. Now, it's easy to say those words and it's easy for people to get into philosophically how that might be interpreted because obviously in physics physics tells us that once the body has decayed and the spirit has left the body the ability for the body to be reformed and all of those things goes against physics and I understand all that but first and foremost we, we a promise was made and when we read it, it we felt it being something more than just men throwing around those words there was something more it was meant to be something more than just some people thinking well, let's put this up and it will never happen so I want to share that with you. Now, when you read One Heaven, and this has been a challenge for everybody, especially myself from day one, when knowledge comes to you and it changes your perspective slightly from what you thought as you were a child to knowledge, it can challenge you. It tests you. It doesn't simply say, that's what you were taught, that's what it is, tick, move on. It's saying understand what is being said understand the message and understand 
and how you need, well not need,